Hey everybody, so there is an update in the kayaker that faked his death, and I'm going to share that with you right now. The disappearance of a kayaker who they say faked his own death and then fled to Europe. Let's listen in live. I'm just not going over. Good morning. Um... I want to uh, thank everyone that is here today, and hopefully everybody uh, made it uh, safely. Uh, I think winter is here now. Um, I want to uh, first get into, uh, um, after our last press conference, uh, we outlined uh, why we had stopped the search on, on Green Lake, and that uh, while we might have stopped the search on Green Lake, that didn't stop our search continuing to look for Ryan. Um, at this time, I just want to, uh, I want to express my uh, my thanks. Uh, yes, I'm up here by myself. The other ones had a lot uh, going on. But I want to express my thanks to uh, um, the Wisconsin Department of Criminal Investigations, uh, the FBI, MOCIC, Homeland Security, the Brown County Sheriff's Office, and especially Bruce's legacy, and Charlie DeGroote, uh, who is our, our dive expert that came in. There are a couple of questions that uh, have been asked repeatedly uh, through the last couple of weeks um, that I would like to address. The, the first uh, potential charges. Uh, there was a lot of concern and uh, the information that the Green Lake County uh, has at this point uh, leads us uh, to an obstructing charge. Uh, what he did on the lake, uh, staging his death. I cannot comment on the federal charges that may or may not be filed um, through our federal partners. Uh, the second one and uh, one of the big, uh, most important one was uh, regarding the amount that Green Lake County will be seeking uh, for restitution. Uh, it's in the uh, area of thirty-five to forty thousand um, dollars. These costs do not include uh, what Bruce's legacy uh, did, or uh, our divers, Charlie DeGroot. Um, we're looking at about $7,000 in equipment expenses um, that uh, along with the wages. Uh, the day of our last press conference, November 8th, we attempted with a number of data points that we were left on his computer. Um, and what I'm saying is that day, we get the numbers that were given to us in trying to make contact with uh, Ryan. Uh, things like phone numbers, email address. Uh, we just did a blitz. And uh, that day, uh, the Brown County Sheriff's Office uh, um, assisted us um, because of uh, the circumstances that we had. And we we're trying to uh, get in contact with Ryan. Through that weekend, uh, we continued to uh, try our communications with a female that uh, spoke Russian. And on November 11th, um, we got in contact with Ryan through her. That was a big turning point. And our biggest concern that we had was if he was safe and well. We asked him a number of questions that pertain to uh, him and his family that he would only know. And then we asked him for a video of himself. And he furnished that, and I'm going to present that now uh, to you folks. Why didn't anyone tell safe drivers in New Hampshire about this new rule? Here's the deal. Insurance agencies are literally ripped. A lot of pressure you can see. <laughs> reached out to deputies. They're starting it now. Let's listen in. Let's never take it out of the way. Thanks. Good evening. It's my former state health manager. 
the algorithm and sometimes the mean and AM by units. Okay, well, that's the great news. The great news is all that is live. I'm going to play a better video. I think that you guys can hear it better on this one. I hope you guys can hear it better. Good evening, it's Ryan Borgward. Today, hello, Matt. Um, today is November 11th. It's approximately 10 a.m. by you guys. Um, I'm in my apartment. I am safe, secure, no problem. Hope this works. All right, I'm going to play the rest of this news. And, uh, well, the bad news is we do not know where Ryan uh, exactly is. And he has not yet decided to return home. We have uh, had nearly a daily communications with Ryan. Um, my chief deputy, uh, Chief Deputy Vandekoek, is our main person that communicates with him and uh, has uh, grown to have a, a pretty good relationship uh, that he continues. There were a number of uh, questions that uh, we have asked him and talked about, and we told him what we were going to be doing next. And one of them was to find out who helped him uh, get off the lake. And he decided uh, in uh, one of his uh, communications that he was going to tell us how he did that. He stashed an e-bike near the boat launch. He paddled his kayak in a child-sized floating boat uh, out into the lake. He overturned the kayak and dumped his phone in the lake. He paddled the inflatable boat to shore and got on, got on his e-bike and rode through the night to Madison. In Madison, he boarded a bus and went to Detroit and then the Canadian border. He continued on the bus to an airport and got on a plane. We are continuing to verify this information, uh, trying to put the dots together. But we feel that uh, uh, this was Ryan's way that he could tell uh, the entire country how he did it. Um, in our communications, we are expressing the importance of his decision to return home clean up the mess that he has created. Our primary judicial concern has been that he safely gets back to U.S. soil. He needs to return home to his children. If he chooses not to return, it's on his own free will. And I think the message is very clear. We have been con continuing to contact the family um, members regarding our communication with Ryan. No warrants have been issued yet. We believe that warrants will not be needed if Ryan cooperates and decides to turn and return home soon. I cannot speak on further on the comments that we have had with him in our communications, but only that we continue to search and help him in any way that we can uh, to get him back. And right now, I will answer any questions that you may have. Has he indicated that he might ever really return? Our communications are continuing to go on and about that matter. Sure, could you speak to the balance that you and your investigators have to rely on in these conversations, knowing full well that if he were to return, he potentially could face state or federal criminal charges regarding this incident while also still trying to get him to return home. And we've talked about that. Um, his biggest concern is how the community is going to react to him. Um, and I can I can see that, okay? He uh, staged his death. And um, unfortunately, uh, one of the things that he did say was uh, he didn't expect us to go more than two weeks 
and searching for him. Well, I hate to tell you, he picked the wrong sheriff from the wrong department. Um, and one of the reasons why he picked Green Lake was because it was the deepest lake in Wisconsin. Uh, he did research, he did, and uh, he thought his plan was gonna, gonna pan out, but uh, it didn't go the way he had planned. And so now we're trying to give him a different plan as to come home, to come back home. Is it believed that he could be in Uzbekistan? I know you said a woman spoke Russian. Greg, we do not know exactly where he's at. Uh, we know that it's someplace in Eastern Europe. Is it Russian about the woman that he's with? Do you know anything about her? Um, at this time, I won't comment on that. Have, Have you talked to his family at all? I know you've communicated with him, but has he communicated with his wife or the, his children? Yes, we have communicated with his entire family, not the children, um, because we feel that... Uh, uh, the mother is there with them, and uh, it's important that they get the information from her. But Bernstein, have, has he talked to his wife and children? He has not. No, he's not. Do you have any previous ties to Eastern Europe? No. Not that we know of. Is a Russian speaking woman that uh, helped you find or been contact with him? Is that the same woman that uh, he was communicating with? Uh, I'm not going to release that at this time. I know you mentioned to be obstructing a charge. Are you going to be pursuing any other charges, like false claim documents, anything like that? Um, what, uh, like I said, we have our federal partners uh, working on that, and that's what they are doing, and I don't have any comment to give on them charges. Uh, speaking of federal partners, has the Green Lake Sheriff's Office uh, gotten the State Department or other federal agencies that may handle things overseas in addition to the FBI at all? Um, they're the ones that uh, go through that, uh, but we have talked to the State Department. Do you have any idea why you did that? What is he said about He just uh, had personal matters going on. And uh, he felt this was the right thing to do. Um, and how he was going to, uh, I mean, you know, there was there was talk about uh, the life insurance uh, plan that he took out. It wasn't for him, it was for his family. Um, and he was just gonna try to make things better in his mind that uh, um, this is the way it was gonna be. And it didn't happen. And I believe he's with this Russian speaking woman right now. Uh, we do not know that. Has he expressed any remorse for what he's been standing through the past several weeks, months? Yeah, he talks about that. Uh, he uh, also uh, feels bad about the amount of hours that we have put in uh, in the community. Um, he says, you know, I got myself in a situation and I just got to try to get out of it. Was there a situation prior to this that led him to take out this insurance policy and decide to fake his own death? No, the situation I'm talking about is, is when he faked his own death, okay? Because it wasn't in his plan to do that. Um, so he's got to try to try to make that better with his family now. What oh, was this a financial situation that led him to lead to why we're here today? Uh, I think it was a number of reasons. Uh, is there evidence of any crimes that he might have committed before he went missing? No. Uzbekistan doesn't have formal extradition with the U.S. Has that? How has that impacted the investigation? Uh, we continue to do our investigation, and we, when we come across them. Uh, them obstacles, we just see where it takes us. Sheriff, where do you go from here? I mean, you've made contact with him, you continue to connect with him. I mean, he's not willing to come home. So where, where do you go from here? Well, we keep pulling at his heartstrings, okay? Um, and that's what we continue. Hopefully he sees this video, I'm sure he sees the other one. Um, but, you know, that's what it's all about. What's we're not gonna give, we're not gonna give up. We wanna continue because he needs to come home with his kids. How long will you continue to try to convince Ryan to come home? I really can't answer that with a specific time. Um, we'll know what happens. Sure, what might have been troubling him to cause him to take this extreme measure? Not really sure. What do you know about how you connected with this woman? Do you know, obviously on the internet, but what method and how did they meet? Do you know anything about that? Um, no, I don't know anything about that. Sheriff, what was the type of fearing for his personal safety to, to lead him to leave? What was that? Did he fear at all for his personal safety, causing him to leave or try no. to fake his own death? No. The flight attendant that was with him, did she know anything about the flight attendant? No. Did she know anything about the flight attendant? No. Did she know anything about the flight attendant? No. Did she know anything about the flight attendant? No. Did she know anything about the flight attendant? No. Did she know anything about the flight attendant? No. Did she know anything about the flight attendant? No. Did she know anything about the flight attendant? No. Did she know anything about the flight attendant? No. Did she know anything about the flight attendant? No. Did she know anything about the flight attendant? No. Did she know anything about the flight attendant? No. Did she know anything about the flight attendant? No. Did she know anything about the flight attendant? No. Did she know anything about the flight attendant? No. Did she know anything about the flight attendant? No. Did she know anything about the flight attendant? No. Did she know anything about the flight attendant? No. Did she know anything about the flight attendant? No. Did she know anything about the flight attendant? No. Did she know anything about the flight attendant? No. Did she know anything about the flight attendant? No. Did she know anything about the flight attendant? No. Did she know anything about the flight attendant? No. Did she know anything about the flight attendant? No. Did she know anything about the flight attendant? No. Did she know anything about the flight attendant? No. Did she know anything about the flight attendant? No. Did she know anything about the flight attendant? No. Did she know anything about the flight attendant? No. Did she know anything about the flight attendant? No. Did she know anything about the flight attendant? No. Did she know anything about the flight attendant? No. Did she know anything about the flight attendant? No. Did she know anything about the flight attendant? No. Did she know anything about the flight attendant? No. Did she know anything about the flight attendant? No. Did she know anything about the flight attendant? No. Did she know anything about the flight attendant? No. Did she know anything about the flight attendant? No. Did she know anything about the flight attendant? No. Did she know anything about the flight attend
your initial contact with this woman who speaks Russian, did she seem to be aware of the full circumstances of what was going on, that Ryan had taken stuff, that his family was looking for him? Did she seem aware of all of that? I do not know. Um, you know, our, our main focus was trying to get a hold of him, and uh, she did that. Is anyone else under investigation for providing assistance? No. What's his demeanor in these communications? Is he scared, sad, anything to describe how he's been communicating? Um, it depends. Um, and uh, we base our our response on the response that we get. Um, I think that uh, he's, you know, he gets emotional. He does. Um, he's just trying to work out the, the right thing. And uh, I tell you, my chief deputy is doing a great job of communicating. Why well, is the sheriff's department continuing to press into the company? I understand there may be obstruction charges here, but... This is a domestic situation. The guy apparently wanted to just leave his family. I mean, at what point do you need to step out and just say this is between him and his family? When that time comes, we'll make that decision. Right now, um, it's important for our department uh, to uh, continue communications with him and uh, know that there's people out here that uh, want him back. Um, so I can't put a time on that. Um, our department is pretty special. It is. Sheriff, do you feel like he's in any danger? I know he's communicating regularly with you, but that he's in danger where he is? Or, you know, no. He's no, we don't feel that. Um, and that's one of the reasons why we wanted to get a video. Um, and, you know, we, we asked him that we want to make sure that he's safe and well. Is there any? Is there any? What is there in Eastern Europe at all? Any contact with the authorities overseas? Uh, we have our FBI agents uh, working on on whatever we can find. Is there an indication that he has any multi-language abilities that would allow him to survive or flourish in a country, especially like Uzbekistan, where English as a second language is not very prevalent? You know, his, his plan might not have worked out the way he thought it was, but he's a smart a smart guy. He is. And uh, just the knowledge that we know, and, and by talking with him, um, he's somebody that could learn that, I think, pretty good. Um, you know, so... In the video, he seemed to say, I'm in my apartment or something to that extent. Do you believe that he's fully assimilated in this other country? How many hours do you work out to look like that? Well, this is the most recent update, and I will keep you guys updated on the story of the kayaker that faked his death. So thank you guys for watching, and... I will keep you posted and updated on all the cases that I do cover. Again, I am going to try to be live soon. If I don't go live before Sunday, I hope to be live for my birthday, and I hope to see you guys there. Thank you for watching, and remember to smash that like button. Comment below, share this out, because remember, disappearing and faking your death is a crime. So don't do it. It is not right, and you shouldn't do it. If you need to get away from something, do it the right way. Have a nice night. Sleep well. Be well. Sending you all love and light. Bye now.